never take light your lineage. Seriously. Uh, my grandmother was the first woman ever to introduce a future uh, president, uh, Eisenhower, when he it was one of the elections and my grandfather had died and he was over uh, the Republican Party for the state of Alabama and died a sudden death. He was a lawyer. And so they honored her at, at one of the, the conventions. And I really do believe she was a powerful woman of God, uh, Methodist. She led all the worship and, and everything. Was the choir director in Clanton, Alabama, which is close to Birmingham. But um, I believe that was a lineage that was passed to me to go before heads of nations. Amen. And uh, before she passed, she told me about a visitation that she had where Jesus literally appeared to her and touched her in the palms of her hands. Mm -hmm. So, you know, everybody's got some family that uh, sometimes we are challenged with past. But I challenge you while we're on this to look into your legacy because all I believe if everybody in here is serving the Lord, then regardless of Maybe some of the things that you've seen in this generation, you never know who way back there. I mean, I've been praying for my grandkids before they were born. So you never know who might have prayed for you. And you never know what legacy you might have. Amen? Uh, I was telling Kathy tonight that when I arrived, um, uh, there was a couple of challenges as I stepped, checked in the hotel. They had... Uh, already charged me for last night, and I was in um, Victoria last night, and and then I had a check that was given to me, and they wouldn't cash it because it was three signatures, and we had a challenge in the car, and I said, Lord, and I just finally told all of them, I'm really saved. Y'all be quiet. I need to get along with the Lord, and I'm telling you, God is so merciful because as soon as we sat down. Uh, the Lord spoke to me about tonight. So none of this was planned, what I'm getting ready to tell you. But it is uh, June the 25th. It's the year, of course, 2013. And you will understand the prophetic word that I'm going to give you by this definition. And so I began to ask the Lord. Those numbers come up to the number 44. And so I, like everybody in here, we learn to Google prophetic numbers and prophetic words. And what does this mean? Because I knew God was speaking something. And this is what he said to me. He said that the number 44 means utter dependence upon God. It also means the way and the walk. Of course, 44 double fours. Four is always symbolic of foundation. Remember the church, four square church? Any of y'all ever heard of that? Yes. It was a solid. So we're built on a solid foundation. Now, I'm going to release to you a, prof, uh, a corporate word, which means this is for everyone up in here. I think you can turn on the fan again because I'm feeling the Holy Spirit. <laughs> I told my other grandson I was sweating buckshots, and he said, oh, Honey, that's a, not a nice word, buckshots. Uh but the last six months of this year, the Lord spoke this mess word to me a few weeks ago. And even though y'all were not with me, you were part of the word. And <clears throat> the word is this. The last six months of this year, you will go in and possess spiritual territory that has been a challenge. And you will go in and possess natural territory that you've never had. Amen. There will be doors yes. of opportunity open. There will be promotions. There will be real estate. There will be yes. transference of wealth. Yes. There will be these kind of things, and I'm going to prove it to you in the Word of God. Amen? Amen. Amen. I will never Amen. prophesy Amen. something to you that you can't find in the Word. And so I want to take you back just a couple of months ago, my first visit where I came here. And uh, I, as I said, you know, I've been to 18 nations and I, I'm always speaking, preaching, teaching, doing something somewhere. Amen? And so as I came here, to be quite honest with you, I thought Kathy Carell was someone else. And someone told me, said, because I, I thought she was somebody else. And I found myself here, and it was the best 
Holy Spirit setup that I've had in all of 2013. Man. I had I am always connected politically or governmentally to a region. I had moved to Galveston, Texas. The Lord told me to move there that I would be a gatekeeper, and we've seen things hope happen that you would not believe. And so I just accepted that it was God's will for me to move from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, not move to Dallas, but to move to Galveston. And the first week that I was in Texas, I came to the Austin area and ministered here. And as I said earlier, I was on the floor worshiping the Lord, and we had a great service that night. And I think I might have ministered on glory invasion. I don't even remember, but long story short, uh, at the end of the service, I knew that there was a covenant relationship that God was doing between me and Kathy, and I just knew, you just you know, that was the God thing. And and uh, and I asked her before I left. I said, you, some of you heard me say this. Can I borrow you this music? Who put this together? Where did she get it? And she told me the story about, of course, you know, the 90 days of worshiping the Lord. And I said, this is amazing. And I went back to uh, Galveston, and the Lord challenged me to go 21 days into worship, which I did. During that first season of worship, and to discipline myself, it is an art. It is a... Um, your most valuable time is not your million dollars in the bank. It's not your five-carat diamond. It's not your multiple businesses that you have. Your most valuable possession in your life is your time with Him. Amen. And the Lord told me, He said, you're only as keen in the Spirit as you are rested and rested in your body and healed. And you cannot enter in worship. I don't care how frustrated you are, what challenges you've had. I have learned that when I get serious and enter that, not corporately like we did tonight, even though that's amazing. I'm talking about one-on-one, -on -one, you and him. Now, I could strike up a conversation with a telephone pole, so, uh, you know, I'm a high-energy girl. And you heard how I said high-energy girl. Even though I'm 62, I'm high energy, as most people cannot keep up with me. But I had determined that nothing was going to keep me away from God's presence. And the Lord used you guys and Kathy to start me on a, a roll, if you will. I had the word about the glory, and I've always walked in a strong anointing. But I knew God was wanting to do something in me. You see, never take light. You don't know what the Lord might want to use you to be an instrument into someone's life. Never think less of yourself. Discover what God says about you. Uh, allow yourself to have an identity crisis. And so that was the beginning of the journey. And after uh, uh, about three weeks, I had been ministering over in uh, Louisiana and was coming back home. And as I was coming back home, I got a phone call from some very dear friends that were in the middle of a horrible situation where their 38-year-old son had been incarcerated for manufacturing a drug called crystal meth. And a little three-year-old baby had gone in the bathroom and gotten a sippy cup and drank this. Oh, my God. And it was all over the news. The FBI was involved. You name it. And immediately I said, God is going to move. I gave them some instruction about worship. Uh, that was on a Tuesday night. On Wednesday night. On Thursday night, I was a preaching at a church called Houston Revival Center. And in the middle of my ministry, a little three-year-old blonde-headed boy ran down to the altar. And of course, this is a church of about 500. And the pastor and the leadership they are thinking that this is totally out of protocol and they need to get this child and I stopped them and I said wait a minute we're going to use this child as a point of contact and then I told them the story this is a church that really believes in worship uh, you know non-stop they always have an amazing worship and even though they've got musicians and everything they use CDs 500 members Kathy and, uh, and so we begin to pray Within 48 hours, the little boy named Braden that was dying, that three doctors said there's no way this child can live, 
was released from a hospital and was put in a foster care home that were spirit-filled believers yes. come on somebody. Yes. Now, I'm telling you all of that because the miraculous thing is the leadership did not even know the little boy that we used as a point of contact was a foster child living in a spirit-filled home there in that local assembly. Wow. And since that time, I've used the word of the Lord to speak over that child. We have had some of the most miraculous miracles take place. We have had, and once again, I'm telling you this because God's raising the bar in your lives because of what I'm getting ready to, to, to release to you that's going to take place in your life. I know it, I prophesy it, I decree it, and I, we will see it come to pass. And so Amen. we begin to see cataracts that will come off people's eyes. We begin to see deaf ears. Uh, when I was in Beaumont a couple of weeks ago, I think it was right around Labor Day weekend or after Labor Day, they had at the last minute, they heard I was coming through to speak in Liberty the, the Sunday night and the Monday night, and they said, look, we've got a gathering. And in this 10,000 square foot house in the, on a ranch, they had so many people coming in. There was no way. And you know what I did? I played some more of Kathy's music that she released me. And then we begin to speak the word of the Lord. And we begin to prophesy. And we begin to see people's lives healed. We begin things. Things were so. And I'm not bragging on Judy Laird. I can do nothing. But I can tell you any man or woman that will take the time to discipline themselves to be in the presence of God. Every, all the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit, you'll begin to embrace your destiny. God will begin to use you in a magnitude that you've never known. You might have read about it, you might have seen it, but it becomes so personal that you begin to experience God and God's anointing and His presence. Not that you won't have challenges. I've had several challenges. But when the challenges come, you know what I've learned? I know then that the enemy thinks that something's getting ready to happen and I just have to keep on pressing through and believing that God is bigger than me. There's three things God cannot do. He cannot fail. He cannot lie. And He's never late. And this is your season for every activity on every activity under the heavens there is a season this is a season these last six months six symbolic of man you're going to go in you're going to possess the land you're going to go in you're going to do more for god than what you have. he's wanting to flow through you because out of our bellies flow rivers of living water amen Hallelujah. And so I'm going to tell you about one more really incredible thing that happened that y'all were a part of. I mean, I've seen deaf ears. We've seen marriages put back together. We've seen people that are getting ready to run for the U.S. Senate walk in looking for a confirmation. And the word of the Lord would just be so precise and he got his answer. But one of the most amazing things, the closest thing to God's heart is when somebody gets saved. And so we've been seeing men and women come to the Lord. And I think it was uh, a week ago from this past weekend, so it would be two weeks ago this weekend, I went to Hot Springs, Arkansas to ordain uh, someone as a prophet. Uh, that was on a sat I was at three days in Heber Springs with Dr. Philip Brasfield, an amazing conference. And then I spoke Saturday night there. And then Sunday night, I was asked to come and speak at a place called Conway Worship Center. And it started out just like this, and then they uh, rented a, a building uh, in a shopping center, and they have had worship for two years, and intercession for two years, 24 hours a day. They are amazing. And they've stepped out of the box, and it's always open. You can go anytime. So I, I got this invitation, and, I, and the Lord said, I want you to go. So I went, and they had two services on Sunday, one at 2 and one at 5. And so they had food for everyone that was there in between because so no one would leave. 
And I walk in and, and with my talkative self, and normally before service I like to get alone, but I walked on in and sat down, and there was a, a man that they helped to walk in. He was albino, he was blind, and he sat down beside me, and I, of course, could not tell. He was dressed very nice. I couldn't tell that he couldn't see because his eyes were like this. And uh, I introduced myself and I said, I'm so glad you're here tonight. And he never gave me his name. And so we're sitting there and I said, you know, uh, why are you here? He said, I came to hear you speak. I said, oh, great. How long have you been serving the Lord? I don't. I'm an atheist. <laughs> I said, oh, okay. I said, you mean you've never asked Jesus into your heart? He said, well, I have, but he wouldn't come. <laughs> so I responded back like I normally would. And I said, well, you just need to receive him by faith. I said, he said, explain faith to me. I said, well, faith to me. I said, this is very simple. I said, I'm a, an Alabama girl, ended up in Louisiana. Now I'm sure enough in Texas. I said, so faith to me is when you... When you take a black and white cow and they eat green grass and it turns into white milk that produces yellow butter. I said, I can't explain that. And he said, I can. <laughs> he is studying uh, uh, for to be a doctor in chemistry and biology. So he had all of it down pat. And when he said that, I said, Apple, my intercessor, you come on over here. I, I want you to come and speak with this gentleman. And I walked out. And I walk, as I was walking out, the Lord said, get him in worship. And so the, you can't be in a 24-hour-a-day worship center, intercept, you know, for two years if they're not going to have good worship. And they had amazing worship. And I began to release this word that God spoke to me about stepping into the river, going in and possessing spiritual territory that had challenged you and go in and possess the land. Amen. 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 And right in the middle, as I so often do, I begin to minister to people prophetically. And I looked at him and I said, come, give me your hand. And I pulled him on up. He was on the second row. He never, he was looking at me like this the whole time. And I'm sure it had to do with him being, you know, legally blind. And I said, you know what? You're like a Thomas. He said, I am. That's my name. I said, okay. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I said, well, this is what we're going to do. Men... And there was about 30 men that came, and we circled this man. And when we did, I began to lead him to the Lord. And as I began to lead him to the Lord, he opened. Now, this is an atheist. It's never been in one of our kind of services, ever. Okay? He began to raise his hands. Tears dripped through, down his cheeks. And for the rest of the service, he sat on the platform beside me. Within 24 hours, he showed up at an hour and a half drive away. And that night, and we're going to do this tonight here, I began to say, there's a, this was in a Methodist church, and God spoke and said he was going to send revival. And I said, you know, all of you people up in here who follow and come to this meeting, we, the Methodist church back in the day had a powerful move of God, and God's going to send revival into this community called Benton, Arkansas. And I said, we're going to take the microphone. And I said, I don't want anybody to pray in their natural, you know, language. I want you to pray as the Spirit gives you utterance. And I said, we have worshipped God tonight. And I'm telling you, worship is the key. Intercession is the key, et cetera, et cetera. And we begin to pass the microphone. And lo and behold, here's Thomas. Oh, wow. He stepped right up to the plate. And uh, the... U.S. Senator that I prophesied that's going to be a U.S. Senator was standing there and my intercessor was right there and she said Dr. Judy I thought I was going to faint because I didn't know what to do should I he was standing there do I give I knew that he did not have the baptism of the Holy Spirit and about that time she passed the microphone and I looked at her and she looked at me and I said God you're going to have to do this and he began to pray in German and then he said in his mind, Dr. Judy said, we can't speak in our own language. And out of nowhere came the most unusual prayer language. So within 48 days, because of your 
gathering of worship and your determination. You see, some things happen like that. But here we are about six months, five months later, and here we've got an atheist. Why am I telling you this? We have an atheist that's named Doubting Thomas uh, that now is trusting God for a total miraculous healing where a body of men are around him, mentoring him, teaching him the word of God, explaining everything to who's to say where this individual is going to end up. All I'm saying to you tonight is that the Lord says the last six months of this year, if you will take a hold of this word that I'm releasing, uh, I'm telling you, you're going to go in and possess spiritual territory. I want you to, in your mind right now, I want you to see every spiritual challenge that you've had because you are going to gain ground tonight with a new level of authority. I'm going to tell you how you're going to get it. And you're going to go in and you're going to possess the land. I prophesy to you, there is a move of God coming to this region. And I believe with every fiber of my being in Arkansas, and in Texas, just like they've had at IHOP in, in Kansas City, I'm telling you there's going to be something that is going to be like a paradigm shift. It's not just going to be intercession. It's not just going to be worship. It's going to be a manifestation of a breakthrough because of consecration where you're going to go in and the promises that God has for every one of us, they're going to begin to manifest because we're not going to be like little grasshoppers and we're not going to see just see the giants. We're going to see the promises and your faith is going to rise to a new level. I just take the limit off of God and I say, who's to say that there is not going to be a 24-hour center of worship and intercession? There's not going to be, there's going to be businesses to support everything. Amen. the limit off of Amen. God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Turn with me very quickly. Now remember, I did not know any of this about the 44 being the way and emphasizing to you the walk. Turn to Joshua 1. And I'm going to give you scripture to study, to hang on to. To write, to write, excuse me. Because this whole thing is about going in. Stepping into a place of breakthrough. If you were to look in the strong concordance, a word up, L-E-S-H-A, that means breakthrough. It's a place east of Jordan. And I'm going to tell you some things that happen at Jordan. Let's, let's see what happens right here. This is after the death of Moses, say the past is the past. The past is the past. <clears throat> the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' age, Moses, my servant is dead. Now then, you and all these people get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land I'm about to give them. Now, this is the sixth month, and in six months we'll come to an end of the year. Is that not right? 2012, Amen. 2014, how many of you know what 14 means? Seven means completion. I believe there's going to be a double completion in some areas of your life. It says, uh, uh, get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land I'm about to give them, to the Israelites. I will give you every place. Here's that step again. I will give you every place where you set your foot as I promised Moses. Here's that word territory. Your territory will extend from the desert to Lebanon and from the great river of the Euphrates, all the Hittite or Hittite country, to the great sea on the west. No one, this is the spiritual territory, no one will be able to stand up against you all the days of your life. Amen. No one, not anything. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities against the powers of darkness. But no one, no thing will be able to stand up against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Somebody say, Amen. 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 
Four times I'm prophesying to you tonight. Okay? Listen to this. Four times I'm going to tell you something. Be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their forefathers to give them. Second time. Be strong and now very contagious. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave to you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left that you may be, key word, successful wherever you go. Say, I'm getting blessed. I'm getting blessed. Do not let this book of the law depart from your mouths. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will, once again, be prosperous. Are you ready for this, church? Yeah. Be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you? Amen. Be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. So Joshua uh, ordered the offices uh, of the people to go through the camp and tell the people, get your supplies ready. Three days from now, you will cross the Jordan here to go into and take possession of the land the Lord your God is giving you for your own. But to the uh, Reubenites and the Gadites and the tribe of Manasseh, you can go on and read all about that. It goes on and talks about you are to help your brothers until the Lord gives them rest as He has done for you until they too have taken possession of the land that the Lord God is giving them. After that, you may go back and occupy your own land, which Moses, the servant of the Lord, gave you east of the Jordan toward the sunrise. That's key. So then it goes on. It says, Then they answered Joshua, Whatever you've commanded us, we will do. And wherever you send us, we will go. Just as we fully obeyed Moses, so we will obey you. Only may the Lord your God be with you, as he was with Moses. Whoever rebels against your word and does not obey your words, whatever you may command them will be put to death. Only be strong and courageous. Now, I've read all of that for a purpose that I'm going to go into in a minute. Go to chapter 3. It says, Early in the morning, Joshua and all the Israelites set out to ship him and went to Jordan, where they camped before crossing over. And after three days, the officers went throughout the camp giving orders to the people. Key verse. When you see the Ark of the Covenant, what was the Ark of the Covenant? It was symbolic of the presence of God. Yes. The glory, how you enter into the presence of God. When you see the Ark of the Covenant of the people, your God, and the priests who are Levites carrying it, you are to move out from your positions and follow it. Key verse. Then you will know which way to go since you have never been this way before. Amen. But keep the distance of about a thousand yards between you and the ark. Do not go too near it. Key verse. Joshua told the people, Consecrate yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do amazing things among you. Joshua said to the priest, Take up the ark and pass on ahead of the people. So they took it up and went ahead. And the Lord said to Joshua, Today, say today, today, I will begin to exalt you in the eyes of Israel so they may know that I am with you as I was with Moses. Tell the priests who carry the Ark of the Covenant, when you reach the edge of the Jordan's waters, go and stand in the river. Joshua said to the Israelites, Come here and listen to the words of the Lord. This is how you will know that the living God is among you and that he will certainly drive out before you the Canaanites and all the ites. Amen? Amen. Amen? Verse 13, And as soon as the priests who carry the ark of the Lord, the Lord, as soon as, as, and as soon as the priests who carry the ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth, set foot in Jordan, its waters flowing downstream will be cut off and stand up to a heap. And you know, of course, that's what happened. Okay, now let's go back to going in, possessing spiritual territory and natural territory. There's four components to Joshua's life that I want you to think about. Number one, he was not moved by what he saw. 
He was not moved by what he heard. He was only moved by what he believed. Do you remember when Moses said, you know, there's call, I'm going to get 12 guys and they're going to go in and they're going to spy out the land. There were 10 that came back. And this 10, all they could talk about, even though they had the fruit and everything to go along, they, all they could say was, we're grasshoppers and they're giants and we're afraid of them and there's no way we're going to possess this land. Joshua, number one, he knew how to submit to authority. Joshua was very keen in who he aligned himself with. Because the guy that he went with, Caleb, what did the Lord say? Caleb had a different spirit. They went in and they came out. They did not say that they weren't giants. They, they knew the whole situation. But the difference in them and the other ten is they saw the promises of God Amen. over the situation Amen. and the way it looked. Yeah. God is going to move in your life, my sister. Amen. And you're going to begin to see what God has promised you over the situation that tries to pull your focus. A Smith Wigglesworth, the reason he was such a man of faith, he said, I'm not moved by what I see. I'm not moved by what I hear. I'm only moved by what I believe. That's why you've got to know what you believe over the circumstances and the situation. And you've got to know that the enemy is the accuser of the brethren or the sister. He's the one that will try to make you doubt and pout and shout and scream and walk away from your destiny. Walk away from promises. Walk away from, how can my children ever be saved? They can because God says that you're in covenant with Him and you train up a child. You have the power to break every situation Amen. that's a generational curse. You have the power. You're not supposed to walk in lack or poverty because uh, the Word of God says the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. What type, what does that mean? That means spiritually you're set free. That means spiritually Amen. you're anointed and a Amen. And many are the plans of man, but the purposes of God. As long as you're focused and you're looking up to Him, no man can dictate or define who you are or where you're going. Because from you, God knows every hair on your head. He knows you before you were ever formed in your mother's womb. He knows the beginning. He knows the ending. He knows everything there is to know. And He's the one that is the author and the finisher of your faith. And your faith says, I'm not going to quit. I'm going to keep on keeping on Amen. because I've got destiny Amen. and I've got people that need what I have to give them that God is ordered. Your gift will make room for you. It doesn't Amen. matter how many men Amen. look over you or how many women. Your Amen. gift, keep your heart pure. Stay in worship. Stay in intercession. And doors will be opened that no man could have opened anyway. Yes. It's because of your heart and your heart being at whatever God's promised, He is well able to perform it. Amen. Now watch. So Joshua was one of these, he knew how to submit to authority. Joshua was one of these that nothing was going to steal his faith because he knew what God's word said. The promises. You'd be surprised that most people can't even write down 50 promises when there's over thousands of them that have been serving God for years. An uninformed believer is a defeated believer. If you don't know what God's Word says about you, how are you going to know how to fight the forces of darkness when the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy? How are you going to know to look the devil in the eye and say, Oh, wait a minute. No, that's not what God's Word says. And I'm going to go there in a little bit and you're going to see. So he knew how to submit he knew how to uh, trust and not doubt when God's Word promised them so many things. And the next thing he knew how to do, he was a worshiper. That's why he told these guys, consecrate yourselves. A lot of times we think consecration is just an examination of our hearts. 
That's part of it. When everybody else went back to the camp, you found Joshua at the tent of meeting because he loved the presence of God. Hear me, these last six months before I leave here tonight, I am going to cry out and make a declaration over you that you are going to engage in worship and intercession in a dimension that you have never known before. You're going to be compelled by the Holy Spirit to lay your phone down, to turn off the TV, to turn off the computer, to get off Facebook and Twitter and everything, and come spend some time with Him because in spending that time with Him, you're putting Him first. Oh, Dr. Judy, that's so old school. It may be old school, but it's 21st century. It's kingdom. And He is saying that if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. And there's something about worshiping Him. I worship the Lord thy God with all of my heart. When you do that, it's not hard to keep anything with Him. And He loves to be able to commune with you because He knows that there is a knowing, there's a oneness, there's a coming together, there is a manifestation that will take place in God's glory. And I know with every fiber of my being that Joshua was one of those that spent that time with him and not only did he spend that time with him he had an ear to hear what he was saying because of the scriptures that I read you God was speaking and Joshua was responding to him I want to ask you a very personal question how many of you can say without any reservation that even today God spoke something and you responded You've got to get in a place. The book of Revelation said when John had that visitation, when the seven churches were addressed, if you read it, it says, He that has an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying will overcome. Amen. God is speaking throughout planet Earth. But I can't tell you that everybody is listening. Joshua was one that he had no fear of taking the lead. I believe every one of you in this room to some type of capacity have been called to be a leader. And not one that to be complacent. And in your darkest hours, the way you respond to God will equip you for promotion and going forward in the things of God. That's why Caleb and Joshua ended up the way they did. The word says, as I quoted earlier, Caleb had a different spirit. Don't align yourself with anybody that does not believe in what God's called you to do. Don't align yourself with anybody that won't take a bullet for you. Don't align yourself with anybody that will not enter covenant with you. Especially salt covenant as well. Salt covenant, salt is symbolic of healing. And I'm going to show you what happens when there's a well and when there's a river that drives up. When you know the power of salt. Because we are the salt of the earth. I'm going to take you very quickly to four different places of the Jordan. And I'm not going to go into a lot of them because I'm going to pray these things over you. If you were to turn very quickly to 2 Kings the 4th chapter. The last time I was here, I think it was the 4th or the 2nd chapter. The 2nd chapter is what it is. It's where I ordered that we talked about going Elijah and the double portion. How many of you remember that? We talked about Gilgal, a place of circumcision. We talked about Bethel, a place of where we love to stay in the presence of God. We then talked about Jericho. After being in the presence of God, the walls fall down. But I want to zero in on the Jordan. Are you ready for this? Amen. They get to the Jordan. And all of a sudden, Elijah asks Elijah, What is it you want me to do for you before I'm taken up? Now the prophet of the hour that had never missed a prophecy with his spiritual son, he had tested his son at every city and told him to stay. People of our day would say, well, his spiritual son was being disobedient. No, he was not. His spiritual father was trying to make sure 
that his spiritual son would continue on to press for what God had in his life. Even when those other prophets would come in each city and tell him, say, you know, your father's going to die today. And he'd say, I know, but don't. He never let any negative thing enter into to stop what he wanted from God. So he gets there and he asks his spiritual father, I want a double portion. And the prophet of the hour turns and says, you've asked a difficult thing for me. Why? Because what God has for you is not contingent upon man. That's why he said, if you see me going up, why? He was letting him know, you look to the hills from whence cometh your help, because help comes from God and God alone. He was testing him. He wanted him to make sure that his eyes were not on man. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. What, is he, what was he saying? It's the fruit of the Spirit. And the character of God is what you follow to go in and to be able to possess the land. And so what did he do? Naturally, that cloak came off and he took it and he wrapped it back up and he went to Jordan. And then he said, where is the God of Elijah? He crossed over Jordan and he ended up at Jericho. So Jordan was not the first miracle. Jordan was the test of the authority that had been released. But the miracle was when he said, they said, come to our region because our region is unproductive. And so Elijah said, watch this, because this is for this region. He said, bring me a new bowl and place salt in it. And he threw it in the water. And as I speak today, that land is still productive. If you were to go over to the fifth chapter of 2 Kings, Naaman, he was a man of influence. And yet there was a little maid who brought attention that he could go to a prophet and be cleansed of his leprosy. And then sometimes people of influence think it's got to be their way. So he goes and he's expecting the prophet to come out. And the prophet says, go on down to Jordan and jump in seven times. And he was going to walk away like some people that you're going to minister to as you go in and possess this new territory, as you go in against forces of darkness that have challenged and stopped and blocked you're going to go in and you're going to hear from the Lord and you're going to give them away as you point them to worship as never before that will cause them to have their breakthrough and cross over their Jordan. And so what his, his men that served under him went to him and said, wait a minute, if he'd asked you to do something great, you'd have done it. Just do it. And so all of a sudden Naaman goes and he jumps and he's healed. So at Jordan, at a place of the river, which is symbolic of the presence of God, not only are you set free, you're delivered, you go in and possess new land, there is a healing that takes place. But probably the most important thing to tell you tonight, if you were to turn very quickly, turn very quickly to the New Testament, Matthew 3, listen to this. Then Jesus came from uh, Galilee, verse 13, to the Jordan to be baptized by John. But John tried to deter him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? Jesus replied, let it be so now. Say now. now. It is proper for us to do this to fulfill all righteousness. Then John consented, and as soon as Jesus was baptized... 
He went up out of the water. At that moment, the heaven was opened. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. The heaven was open. The heaven was open. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. What are you saying, Dr. Judy? I'm telling you that the spiritual authority is coming to you. I'm telling you you're going to go in and possess the land because uh, when God allows you to go in and possess a new territory, number one, you need the favor of God. There's a place in worship that God is bringing Georgetown a rise to. Uh, you think you've worshipped before? Thus saith the Lord. He's raising the bar because he's got a place that you're going to be in. That when you come up out of the river of worship, the heavens are going to open. I know in the spirit tonight, the heavens are open over this place. And I believe there's some men and women in this room, you know what, that are going to see the Father himself say, I'm well pleased with that daughter. I'm releasing favor. I'm releasing power. I'm releasing authority. Authority. There's men up in here tonight uh, that as you jump in the river and you begin to worship God and you begin to listen to what the Lord says and you just take it all off uh, and yield completely to God, uh, you're going to do just like Jesus did. Didn't He say the works that He did? We yes. do even greater. Yes. What happened yes. after He went in the Jordan? I'll tell you what happened. Uh, then He went in 40 days uh, of the desert uh, where He was tempted of the forces of darkness. Did didn't I tell you you were going to have new spiritual authority? He was tempted, but every time he said, it is written, it is written, it is written. There's something about being in the presence of God, the river, the glory, whatever you want to call it, consecration. There's yes. something about a one-on-one -on -one experience with him that will take you to another level that you will go in and possess spiritual territory because of the authority. After that desert experience, the power came, and every place he went, there were miracles, there were signs, and there was wonders. Amen. June 2013, yes. a new season of going in yes. the last six months of this year. Six months, that seems like a long time. But who minds? Obedience. If the end result is there's a paradigm shift in your life and your family gets saved Amen. and you're blessed financially Amen. and your body is healed Amen. and all of a sudden things that are needed in this region godly men and women uh, at the political center of this state uh, and laws uh, and things are changed. Who minds uh, if God uh, in the midst of all of this can give you a witty invention uh, yes. or release real estate to you or cause yeah. you to be uh, totally death free. 